Synchronizer, basic operation. The synchronizer performs three basic tasks. The first task, the synchronizer must synchronize the rotational speed of two rotating objects. The second task, the synchronizer must be able to mechanically lock the two rotating objects together. And finally, if the objects cannot be synchronized, the synchronizer must block or prevent the mechanical locking mechanism from attempting to engage. This prevents gear grinding, which is also known as gear clash. The synchronizer hub has several functions that apply to it. One is that the synchronizer hub splines to the shaft. It splines through the splines in the center of the hub and fits onto the shaft. This way, the hub rotates with the shaft at all times. Now when we pull the synchronizer hub off the shaft, we'll not only see the splines, but we'll notice that it's recessed on that side, and on the other side there's a raise in the center. That means the synchronizer hub goes on one way. And actually, it'll fit more than one way, but it won't function properly. Now if we take a closer look at the hub, we'll see the splines for the synchronizer sleeve to slide on. Then there's a slot for the synchronizer keys, and the hole in the center is for a synchronizer spring. The synchronizer sleeve has special functions and attributes of its own. The sleeve is designed to slide onto the synchronizer hub through the splines in the center. Once you get it lined up properly, it should slide smoothly back and forth onto the hub. The splines are specially designed. The one in the center here has a special cutout in the middle for the synchronizer key. On both sides, the splines have been removed, so you can line that up properly onto the hub. If you look closely at the teeth, or the pointed part of the teeth, you'll see a back cut. This is designed to hold the sleeve onto the gear. The outside of the sleeve has a cutout for the shift fork. Take a look on each side of that cutout. You'll see that the edge is a little bit different for each one. In this picture, one edge has a thin line on it. This designates which way the sleeve fits onto the hub. You can also have tapers or different designations on the edge of the sleeve, so make sure you put it on the hub correctly. The free spinning speed gear has several attributes of its own. The angle cut teeth, or helical cut teeth, give it a good quiet operation with great load carrying capabilities. The number of these teeth determine the gear ratio. The small straight cut teeth, known as clutching teeth, are used to engage the synchronizer sleeve with the speed gear. The conical face surface is used for the synchronizer blocker ring, allowing synchronization of this gear. And the polished surface in the center is used for a set of needle bearings, so the free spinning gear can rotate freely on a shaft. This can demonstrate how the synchronizer locks the gear to the shaft. First I'll slide the sleeve onto the synchronizer hub. Then I'll take the free spinning speed gear and remove the needle bearings. I'll slide the needle bearings onto the shaft. They ride on a polished surface. Next I'll slide the speed gear onto the shaft over the needle bearings. Here you'll be able to see that the speed gear free spins on the shaft. Now if I slide the sleeve towards the speed gear, the clutching teeth will lock the sleeve to the speed gear, therefore locking the speed gear to the shaft. Move the sleeve back and the free spinning speed gear spins freely. And slide the sleeve forward again and once again it's locked. The clutching teeth on the sleeve are designed to engage with the clutching teeth on the free spinning gear. When the sleeve moves towards the free spinning gear, the clutching teeth will lock together. This will lock the sleeve to the gear. The cutback onto the clutching teeth help prevent the gear separation. If the gear is not properly engaged with the sleeve, then the clutching teeth won't lock, and this could cause jumping out of gear or improper engagement. This is a synchronizer blocker ring. It works in conjunction with the sleeve and the synchronizer keys. Its job is to synchronize the speed of two rotating objects. If these objects are unable to synchronize, it has a second job, which is to block the sleeve to prevent gear grinding between the sleeve and the speed gear. 
The blocker ring has a reverse conical surface on the inner edge. This conical surface fits perfectly on the conical surface of the speed gear. There's also clutching teeth that line up between the speed gear and the blocker ring. The inner edge of the blocker ring is created frictionless. This one has grooves to create friction between the blocker ring and the speed gear. This one uses a friction style sintered metal surface. And this one uses a fiber metal or fiber product much like a brake shoe. And here's an unusual design. This is a double cone design with friction material on both sides. The synchronizer key, which looks like this, fits into the synchronizer hub. There are three locations. There is a key for each one. There's also a cutout on the blocker ring for the synchronizer key. It fits into the special cutout. When they're put together, they look like this. When you take a look at them in the transmission or transaxle, you'll see that the synchronizer rocks back and forth. It's got a little bit of movement because of the difference in the size of the cutout on the blocker ring and the size of the key. Now when you rotate the entire shaft, you'll see that the blocker rings rotate with the shaft and the synchronizer. Therefore, they rotate at shaft speed. Now, the key also fits in the special cutout on the sleeve. When they're put together, they look like this. And when the shifter is shifted, the sleeve pushes on the key and slides it over to lock the gear, blocker ring, and synchronizer together. This animation shows that the speed gear is rotating faster than the blocker ring and synchronizer. As the synchronizer sleeve starts to move over, the blocker ring pushes against the speed gear and synchronizes the speed of the two objects. Then the sleeve can move over and lock the two together. Watch this really close. I need to point out a few things. Here's the speed gear clutching teeth. And here is the synchronizer blocking ring teeth. And right there is the synchronizer sleeve. Now when I start this up, you're going to see the sleeve start to move to the left. Now when that happens, the blocker ring teeth are going to start to synchronize up with the teeth of the speed gear. I use a strobe light to stop everything, and you'll see the speed gear and the blocking ring teeth line up and then the sleeve will move over and lock everything together. Now watch carefully. Watch the sleeve and watch the synchronizer blocker ring. The sleeve move over, look at the blocker ring. Okay, I moved it back. Now move the sleeve up, look at the blocker ring and engagement. Now they're different speeds. They're sinking and lock. One more time. Take a look. They're sinking and one more time, sync, and lock it. Perfect operation of a synchronizer.